Steve Lukather's opinion on my solo was quite the shock for me. I wasn't sure if it's actually good enough. And all of a sudden I get this comment, Steve Lukather official. And what he wrote was unmistakably to the point. Now, what did he say about my solo? Let's find out. But first, let's listen to the solo we're talking about. What's up everybody, Joey here. We got an exciting video today because Steve Lukather's opinion on my solo was quite the shock for me. But before we go there, two things real quick. If you like that kind of stuff that you just heard, make sure you subscribe. I do that stuff all the time. And second, if you want to play your own solo over that exact backing track, that backing track is up for sale in my shop. I put the link in the description if you want to buy it. Let's get into it. I wrote this riff and the according solo for one of my last YouTube videos. It was about how good a Telecaster sounds when you play it in C sharp standard. If you haven't watched that video, I put it up here. And then that YouTube video came out and I listened back to the song that was in there. For me, it was okay. It wasn't really a great song or a great riff. It was like, yeah, this kind of serves the purpose of just demonstrating how a telly sounds when you tune it down. The video also was like an average success. There weren't a lot of comments indicating that the song is necessarily a standout song. And then as I usually do, because I create a lot of content for YouTube and for Instagram, I usually reuse the thing that I'm playing on YouTube and just put it in a reel on Instagram, like a one minute clip, right? And around that time I didn't have anything else that I could post and I desperately needed some content for Instagram. So despite me not really liking what I played in that kind of song, I said, okay man, I probably have to post it anyway, even though I'm not really happy with the solo or the riff. I remember for a split second I considered not even posting it at all on Instagram because on Instagram, content needs to be snappy, it needs to be fast, and this riff was just like 30 seconds long before it actually enters into the solo, and I'm like, dude, guys will be bored with this kind of stuff on Instagram. And boy oh boy was I wrong, but more to that later. Anyway, at the end of the day, I still posted it, because I remembered what Flea said in that Dave Grohl documentary about touring bands, when he said, the worst thing that could happen to a musician is that he doesn't release a song that's in his head. And when I first watched that movie, that phrase kind of stuck with me because I tend to be a person sometimes that holds stuff back just because I don't think it's good enough or I think I might save this for some better situation, one situation that actually never comes, but that's how human brains work sometimes. But I remembered Flea and what he said in that movie and I said, all right, fuck it. Let's post it anyway. So I actually do post it and the numbers go up quickly. So for days and days I would just check the video here and there and see what kind of comments came in and people seemed to really really like it. So that was already the first thing I was wrong about because I thought nobody would care about a slow, dragging, spacey riff like that. But then one morning I wake up, I check my phone and I have like 10 private messages from followers. And the messages all say the same thing. Steve Lukather commented on your video. And I'm like, hold on bro, that can't be. Are you messing with me right now? But then there it was. Steve Lukather official commented on my video. And what he wrote was very short, but also unmistakably to the point. Killer. Obviously at that point, my mind just explodes. It's freaking Steve Lukather. I showed it to all my friends, I showed it to my family, my parents, my sister. I mean, it's Steve Lukather. Think Africa, think hold the line, 
think all the amazing solos that guy has ever put down on tape. That's gotta be one of the biggest compliments I could ever, ever get. I was just beyond humble. I was like, from now on, nobody can give me crap about anything anymore because if it's good enough for Steve, it's good enough for you. It's good enough for all of us. Now you would think that's the end of the story, but it's actually not because there's a moral to that story, guys. Let's put it that way. How often have you stopped doing something because you thought, I'm not good enough. This is not ready. This will never be good enough to show it to anybody. If only I could make it as perfect as X, Y, Z. All of these things, all the self-doubt, all of that goes out of the window with one word like that. At least it does for me. So the moral to the story really is, if you think you're not good enough, or your art is not good enough, or your solo, your riff, your song, your band, your painting, whatever you have, if that stuff you think is not good enough, that doesn't mean anything. Because it might be the greatest thing to somebody else. First of all, you can't really judge the things that you do because you can objectively view them because they're made by you. So just because you think something isn't ready or isn't good enough, that doesn't mean that's real. And the second thing is, and you can clearly see it with this story, you need to publish your art simply because it could be the next step in the right direction. It could be that next door that opens that gets you one baby step closer to your goals. And that's exactly what Steve Lukather did for me. He basically helped me overcome my self-doubt in that situation. I didn't want to post the solo because I think it was B material. But then you have somebody like Steve Lukather and he's like, Man, that's really good, that's actually killer. That makes you see we really can't judge our own work through our own eyes. And that's how the story ends, guys. I hope you had fun, I certainly did. Make sure to subscribe and like if you enjoyed this. Check out the backing tracks in my shop if you want to, and I see you in the next one.